Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Florence and if you want some more houseplant care videos, please subscribe. Today we're going to be chatting about Philanthus mirabilis, which is a really cool cordex plant. It's otherwise known as the dragon wings or the butterfly cordex plant. And you can see that it's got this kind of big trunky type cordex and the leaves are this really, really beautiful dusty kind of pink colour with pop of green and just it's a really classic looking plant. I personally would recommend this to almost everybody. I think beginners could look after this. I think that, yeah, I just think that this plant is absolutely amazing and everybody needs one of these in their collection. This plant is native to Thailand, Laos and Myanmar. I think I'm saying that right. If not, I'll put them on the screen. And it's found in the mountain regions quite high where it's misty and doesn't have massive amounts of bright sunshine so that will kind of give you an idea of what this cordex wants. I will just say that philanthus means leaf flowers and you can really really see that when you look at these leaves up close I will try and insert some actual good footage for you instead of me just waving it about in front of the camera but yeah they are just absolutely amazing they're called the butterfly plant because when it's sunset the leaves will all close in on themselves and similar to an oxalis this is a really just cool plant it changes throughout the day and is an easy grower so definitely definitely recommend this cordex plant this is kind of the average size that you will see on the market i will hold it up to my head so you can see but they tend not to get more than 25 centimeter cordex and the branching tends not to get more than about 50 centimetres. Obviously, these plants grow in the wild, so they might grow in different conditions and thrive elsewhere. But for all that I could find online and in journals and stuff, that is the kind of basic info on how to, or how big these will get. I will just mention before we go on, just because I know that a lot of people will be looking at this and thinking, oh, I have pets and I have children and, you know, things that touch and eat plants, I don't know. Um, these are toxic. <laughs> so if you are looking for a non-toxic plant, this is not the plant for you. This is toxic. If it's ingested, it tends to give you a very upset stomach. And as far as I can find out, it's the same for animals digesting this. Okay, light conditions to grow this in. So this likes bright indirect light. I will say that I've had mine in a south window in the windowsill and it has been fine. You will notice on here that there is some burning. This is from the washing up liquid. I have it positioned above um, my sink. It's from washing up liquid touching the leaves and then being pressed against the window. So that obviously has caused burning. But as far as the rest of the plant, it hasn't suffered from being in direct sunlight. But if you have really, really harsh or single glazed windows, then I would recommend pulling it back and making sure that it's just diffused or indirect light. Okay, when watering this plant, you want to err on the side of caution. Treat it like a cactus or a succulent. And the first thing that I'm gonna say on this matter is only water this plant when the cordex is awake. When the plant starts to grow, if you've got just the cordex from here downwards, then don't water it. You're asking for trouble and it's just not worth it because these are absolutely stunning plants which are quite tricky to get hold of at the moment of filming this video and I personally would be heartbroken if I overwatered this plant so just hold off. <laughs> so on that note I water this about once every two weeks or so when the plant is awake and I have it in really well draining soil but with well draining soil, I still only water it once every two weeks. I cannot stress enough how much not to overwater this plant. It, it will hate it. <laughs> when the leaves start to yellow, then you need to pull back on the watering. That tends to be when it's going into dormancy and it will need less and less water from that point onwards. Okay, if you underwater this, you're gonna get crispy and yellow leaves tends to be the same with most house plants they either wilt or they go crispy and that's just because it's not moist not enough moisture getting into the leaves and yeah up your watering in that case if you're doing it every two weeks and it's starting to crisp maybe try once every 10 days don't go like every single day that's not going to be the way that this plant works 
it will still need periods to dry out and yeah just experiment but don't overwater <laughs> if you overwater you're gonna get some wilting which again is confusing because that's normally a sign of underwatering you're also going to get some yellow and browning leaves i don't know whether this is crispiness or whether it's sogginess or what i can't tell you and i'm really sorry but if you overwater this the most likely thing to happen is that the base will start to rot now you can see here it's slightly dark along this line that's just because i've watered it recently and it's water sucking up into the base this is not rotten i can tell it's completely solid and i'm perfectly happy with that but if you are umming and ahhing underwater on a side of caution just so that you're not going to rot this and it won't then cause problems later on okay like i mentioned previously these tend to grow in like misty mountain scapes so you want the humidity a minimum of 60 percent obviously the higher the better if you've got good airflow and air circulation to be honest i've had this in about 50 to 60 percent and it's been perfectly happy I've also had it in 80% where it grew a lot more. So if you want one of these to really thrive, then you'll want to up the humidity and try not to mist it either because they don't massively like water sitting on their leaves. So if you have a humidifier or you can put kind of clay pebbles around it filled with water, then definitely do that. It will improve this plant. And I normally take humidity with a pinch of salt, but with this one, it actually makes a massive difference. Temperature wise, you don't really want it going below 15 degrees and you don't really want it going above about 28. This is a hardy plant in zone 13, I think. If I've not got this right, or well, anyway, I'll just put it on the screen so that it's easier for you all. But I personally wouldn't grow this outdoors outside of the climate that it was grown in. I think if you're anywhere else in the world, grow it indoors or at least you know maybe grow it on a balcony but under cover so it's not getting that full sun but again do not let this plant get too much water if you are in a very humid place but it tends to rain a lot just make sure that you've got the best draining soil okay we've talked about temperature we've talked about humidity and we've talked about watering so i'm going to go on to fertilizer so these are not heavy feeders i probably water this once every two weeks and then in that time I fertilise once every four waters so again not heavy feeders at all they tend to get kind of salt build up and mineral build up around the cordex and on the leaves of the plant um, if you fertilise too much so just hold back on fertiliser they'd much rather have too little than too much so I use liquid gold leaf not sure if you can see that and i'll put it on the screen as well what measurements i use and again that is once every four waters so obviously as the plant goes into dormancy then i pull back on the fertilizer if it means that i'm watering you know once every three weeks rather than once every two i will also pull back on the fertilizing in the same way so it'll be once every four waters and if that happens to line up then i will obviously fertilize <laughs> And just lastly, I will do one last fertilizer of half dose, and I will do that on the last water that I give it before its complete dormancy period. That tends to just give it that nutrients that it can suck up during the winter and just before it goes dormant so it can really have that last boost of energy to bring itself back in the spring. So I've been going on a lot about fertilizer and temperature and watering and all of that and that all ties in to the potting compost i'm not sure if you can see here but i have this in super super well draining compost and if you can i would go for grit and sand in normal compost i have actually done mostly orchid bark and terracotta and you've got some perlite i've only got about 10 percent soil in there so that will give you a kind of idea of how well draining it is if you can't get your hands on any grit or anything, then add some stones in with cactus compost. I guess that's the best that you could do. But anything that the water is literally just gonna flow straight through so that it can gather the moisture that it needs but not be sat in any form of water. These plants really, really need good airflow in the soil, which is another reason 
that it's good to have kind of like a lumpy soil if i pick this up you can see that it will just drop and you know there's no moisture in there and i watered that two days ago so that will give you an idea of roughly how well draining it is the other thing i will say is that if you water this too much and it's in a very well draining soil and it's got good airflow it's less likely to rot so it's just better to err on the side of caution and just go for a better draining compost when you're potting this you want to put the bottom third of the cordex into the soil and then obviously pour soil around it but you do not want soil all the way up to here that will just cause the cordex to rot and just yeah it might not look like it's well balanced once it's rooted and established it will be perfectly happy and you won't have to worry about that at all I will also mention that you need to make sure that your pot has drainage holes so I loved this pot when I first got it and it had no drainage holes so what I did was I turned it upside down with some water put a cloth in the middle and just hammered a screwdriver into the bottom and you can see now that I have a good drainage hole it might only be one but I was scared of cracking the rest <laughs> but if you can make sure that you have a really really well draining pot it can't be one of the pots that have the sources attached that actually aren't draining at all you know you want something that the water is just going to flow out of and it's not going to sit in it it's not going to sit in a saucer of water and yeah that's another thing as well by the way do not bottom water this plant make sure to pour water through it because you want the water just to drain straight through rather than you know try and be sucked up the bottom and actually you're just ending up with a clog of water at the bottom and none of the topsoil is actually damp <laughs> if you are massively worried about overwatering one of these then if i were you i would also pot it in terracotta that means so that any moisture will just be wicked away from the soil if you are an overwaterer and you know you use plastic maybe change to terracotta because it might do your plants a bit better to dry out that that little bit more when you come to repot these remember that you should only really repot these about once every three years and that might not seem like you know a crazy amount of time but you've got to remember that these are going to go dormant and then grow again and then continue to go dormant and you just really want the best soil mixture and the best ingredients for that soil mixture as you possibly can so don't scrimp on it I would go for something a bit more expensive or that feels a bit more organic but just make sure it's super well draining <laughs> please okay so dormancy and this is when the heartbreak starts because you don't know whether your plant's dying or if you're like me you're just a massive warrior i have had plants go dormant on me and not realize that they go dormant and thought they just died so i'd thrown them out at the beginning of my plant journey and that's something that I do not wish on anyone. So remember that these plants go dormant. Dormancy will allow the cordex to gain strength and grow and just kind of have a bit of a break. These plants do need a break every now and then, which is why they go dormant. And it's completely up to you whether, you know, by the time that it's gone completely dormant, you've still kind of got crispy leaves or branches on there. It's completely up to you whether you pick them off or cut them off or just leave them on there it's you know personal choice it won't affect the plant at all but i would just make sure that all of that nutrients has just gone back into the cordex before you pick them off so if they're still looking kind of a bit wilty and yellow but still like they could have some life left in them leave them on until they're completely crisp and dried up and then it's up to you whether you chop them off but just let all of that extra energy go back into the cordex because you're not growing these in your native climate, you've got to remember that, you know, they might not go dormant. They might just be too warm or have the perfect conditions inside and therefore not need to go dormant. So don't stress if it hasn't. If it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So if your plant is going dormant, do not disturb the cordex. Don't pull it out and have a look at the roots or, you know, think, oh, I'll just store that somewhere. Keep it in its pot and it's completely up to you whether you want to store it in a dark place but just make sure that it's somewhere relatively warm and dry don't water at all and this plant will be perfectly happy now when you think you're ready for this plant to start to wake up and kind of have a bit more life in it or it's showing tiny amounts of growth or you've been waiting for six months and nothing's happening pull it out 
put it in a really bright place with lots of warmth and lots of humidity. I actually put this under a glass dome in my southwest window and it was on a wooden floor which got constant sun so it was almost like a heat mat and that woke it up. It had been dormant for six months and I was, you know, kind of almost this is a lost cause and you know I've killed it before I've even had any growth off it. No, just give it some heat, give it some moisture and just give it some humidity and I promise you this plant will come back if the cordex isn't rotten and it's had a healthy dormancy period and it had a healthy growing period last time, your plant will come back and it will grow again and all it needs is just a little TLC. So when it does come back from dormancy and you're thinking, oh no, when should I water? What should I do? All I'm going to say is the first water, give it a really thorough water with some good fertilizer, just to give it that real boost so that it can get going and produce the beautiful leaves for you and really just kind of have a head start rather than, oh, I'll fertilize it the next time I water so not to burn, you know, any of the roots. Don't do it. Fertilise the first time so that it just immediately has that start to go. Okay, so if you are here asking why is my philanthus mirabilis? God, that is a name. <laughs> why is that struggling? Why is it, you know, why are things going wrong with it? Why is it yellowing and dropping leaves? That is probably dormancy and I wouldn't worry about it. Just pull back on that watering and, you know, just let it have dormancy. Let it sleep for a bit. It's been working hard for you, it's been absolutely beautiful, and now it's time to let it just have a break. Okay, another problem is cordex rot, and to try and avoid this, you want to keep that potting medium that it's sat in super well draining, super dry, and just try and avoid overwatering. Try to avoid keeping that potting medium wet, please. <laughs> that would be 90% of your problems with this plant and there's just no need for it why why would you keep this wet it's a cordex plant you know you've sat it in hopefully cactus soil which is super well draining stop watering it so much just stop <laughs> another thing that you might be thinking about your cordex plant is why is the growth so stunted on it why are my leaves so small why is it stopped after two leaves that could be just because it's not getting enough light move it into a place with better light and see what happens see how it goes you know keep it there for a couple of weeks and see whether your plant reacts to it in a really beneficial way it might take some time but it's worth a go and stunted leaves aren't always the worst thing at least you're still getting growth so look at it as a positive if you are giving it too much sun on the other hand then it's going to get scorched leaves they probably actually will look a bit like that um, as I mentioned previously, that is from washing up liquid and then being pressed up against the window, but that might give you an idea of roughly what a scorched leaves will look like. Might be a bit more severe than that. Just pull it back a bit. Give it less harsh light and give it that kind of space to have some afternoon sun, but also get a bit of shade. Or alternatively, have it in full sun in the morning if that works for you, if you've only got morning sun windows. Try that. Just give it some space from the light, pull it back a bit, and yeah, I mean, think about how you would be if you were in the sun all day and you didn't wear sunscreen. You need some protection, and that's all of these plants are asking for you. They're just asking you to have a bit of space from that sun, have a bit of respite, and just, you know, not to be burnt. <laughs> the other day, I was researching this video and I was thinking, I've not had any problems with this plant except for the fairy liquid and then I spot a mealybug. Just one, just one lone mealybug but that proves that these can get mealybug and I will show you where it was, you can't actually see but it was just around here just kind of chilling and well actually I lie it was like up here but it was just chilling, it wasn't doing any damage, I immediately got that alcohol and kind of just wiped it off. But these do suffer from mealybug and also supposedly spider mites. I haven't had that problem, thank God. Um, but I've got a spider mite problem solver video, uh, which you can go check out and I'll put it up on one of the corners. <laughs> and the other thing that this can get, which is why I say not to spray it to up the humidity, 
is it can get powdery mildew obviously there's sprays and treatments that you can do for that and there's plenty of videos on youtube that you can look at for treatment for that but just try to avoid water sat on the leaves if you do want to spray it just make sure you've got it near a window or near really good airflow like by a fan or something just so that, that water doesn't sit and cause problems on the leaves the next thing that i'm going to chat to you about and probably why quite a few of you have come to watch this video and that is propagation now i love this plant and i would do anything to share it with some of my really passionate plant friends unfortunately you can't you can't propagate this by chopping a bit of leaf or a stem or any bit of the cordex and trying to reroot it and it is so disappointing but if you do happen to get yourself some seeds then i will tell you what you need to do to grow them and yeah i'm sorry for everybody who's looking to see how to propagate this in water or in soil or however just so that you could share it but if you do manage to get your hands on some seeds you need to soak the seeds in water for roughly 24 hours um, make sure the water's fairly lukewarm so you know it's just not ice cold to touch and let them just sit for 24 hours and soak up as much water as possible then you want to get some cactus soil or some really well draining soil and put them in there just lay them on top and put them in there spread out so that if they all germinate then you have space to pick them out and do different things with just so that they're not all getting tangled together so once you've laid them on the soil you then want to put them about half a centimeter deep into the soil so just push it down into the soil and just lay them there cover them up finely with a bit of extra soil just scrape your hand over the top even and just leave them you don't want to compress the soil and you don't want to overwater them you don't want them to be constantly moist you just want them to have an even layer of moisture but just make sure that they are not soggy you want them in bright indirect sunlight so again same care as this and you want them about 18 degrees so if you can use a heat mat if not just have them on the windowsill but make sure there's no cold draft or anything that can shock them and if you really fancy it, you can always put a dome or, you know, grow them in a prop box and try them out that way so that they get that humidity that they need. Now, I'm going to break your heart again if you've got seeds. <laughs> and they take potentially up to five months to germinate. Now, I know that wasn't what you wanted to hear and I am sorry, but they are worth the wait. If you get your hands on some seeds, then let me know how it goes please and update me in your process so after the five months and they've started to germinate um wait until they've got about two leaves before repotting them obviously most plants get kind of like a tester leaf and then they show an actual leaf which you know is more characteristic of how they will grow and wait until that second leaf comes through then you can repot them and follow the care guide that i've given you in this video and yeah just let me know i'm so interested if anybody has grown these from seed because i'm just absolutely fascinated and yeah i think it would be really cool to find out so let me know in the comments below and yeah i look forward to hearing from you okay i'm just gonna put this down so it's out of the way and i'm gonna be reading this section um i'm gonna scooch over to one side so that i can put some information on the screen and some pictures but i thought i'd chat to you about different varieties Okay, so there aren't actually many variations of Cordex philanthus, which is what I thought I should show you in this video because I thought it'd be really cool and interesting to see. Um, but I'm just going to show you these anyway. <laughs> okay, so first off, you've got philanthus emblica. I'm going to put the name on the screen because, again, I have no idea if I'm saying this right. So this is actually the Indian gooseberry tree. I think that's what it's known as. Uh, the leaves grow kind of close together and they're green and yellow flowers so it's different to the cordex the cordex does not flower um but these i thought were just really beautiful and worth showing you okay the next one is philanthus nairuri again no idea if i'm saying that right um this is otherwise known as the stonebreaker and this is really cool actually it helps treat high blood pressure and I thought that was really interesting. So if you like the look of this and you have high blood pressure, maybe do some research. <laughs> I'm really struggling. <laughs> I can't read this. I'm going to hold it up. 
because I can't do it. So I'm sorry if I'm not looking at the camera, even though I probably haven't been looking at the camera for this whole time. Um, this is Philanthus Reticulatus. So the reason I chose this one, also, can I have a little round of applause, please? Because I actually got that name right. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I've got verbal diarrhea now. Um, this last one I thought was cool because apparently it smells like boiled potatoes. Anyway, that is enough of me wittering on about Philanthus mirabilis. Again, I'm sorry if I got a bit too carried away with all of the information in this video, but I really hope that you found it useful. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want more plant content, then please subscribe. And also, if you've got any questions, let me know down below in the comments. I'll be happy to answer any questions. And if not, I can point you in the right direction. Anyway, I will see you next time. Bye.